Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chulu Longcorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing these quick tutorials to show you how to set up basic interactivity. Today, we'll be going over the rotate component. Adding a rotating element to your space can accomplish many things, from creating simple obstacles for players to solve, to adding platforming components, to setting up revolving doors. Any of these elements add interactivity to your spaces, no matter what the space is designed for. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I chose the Cube Wasteland template, as it will allow us to do some fun stuff with the rotate component. Let's head over to the resource box and take a look at some assets with the rotate component already added. The first asset we're going to look at is the rotating cross asset. This asset can be used for simple platforming and gives us a quick rotating door. First, let's make a rotating door utilizing the rotating cross. As you can see, the rotator spins across automatically upon play. That's because its trigger condition is on start. Let's change that to touched by player and see what happens. Now you can see that the cross only starts rotating once the player collides with it. Initially, the rotation direction is set to clockwise. We can change the rotation direction by setting it to anti-clockwise. Next, let's take a look at the rotating disc. This asset is simply a circle-shaped platform which rotates. It's great for creating an obstacle the player must deal with while traversing a space. As we can see, it is set up to spin anti-clockwise and begins rotating on start. As with the cross, we can change this to start when the player touches it, thus shifting the disc's behavior. There are a few other gear assets in the resource box which use the rotate component in different ways, such as the revolving door and the swinging hammer. I recommend you check them out to see different ways to use the rotator. Now let's dig into the rotate component, its settings, and the ways we can put it to work in a space by adding it to an asset. We'll create a bridge obstacle with a spinning ring in the middle for the player to navigate. Let's add the beveled ring and set it up with some platforms to make it into an obstacle. This setup will become a whole series of obstacles for us. First though, we must add the rotate component to the ring. We do that by going to the gameplay panel, clicking on the add component button, and selecting the rotate component from the gameplay section. Now let's see how the rotator options affect gameplay. As you can see, we get a ring spinning around its center once like a wheel that the player needs to jump through to get across our bridge. We don't want the ring to spin just once, so let's change the rotation number under looping mode to infinite times. Also, let's make it a bit more challenging. We'll do this by changing the axis under rotation settings to Z. And boom! Now you can see that it presents a greater challenge to the player. Okay, let's change the time under rotation settings to three to make the ring spin a bit faster. Now the ring presents a major obstacle to the player. And if we shift the axis to X, the ring presents a different type of obstacle. All right, let's do something quite a bit different. Let's change the axis back to Z, change the type under rotation settings to arc, change the angle to 180, and the type under looping mode to two-way. And boom! Now we get the ring rotating back and forth, changing the timing for getting through. Now let's look at changing the triggering conditions. But first, let's change the direction for something a bit different. Okay, if we simply set the condition to touched by player, nothing will happen, because the player will most likely avoid the ring and thus never touch it. However, we can still use the touched by player setting if we choose another object as our triggering object. So let's do that, choosing the first beam as our triggering object. In our case, that's beam 01, 2. Now the ring doesn't start rotating until the player starts across a broken bridge, making it yet another type of obstacle. On enter and on exit will require us to add a trigger box to the ring. They both give us very precise control over just when the ring begins to spin. 
by setting the trigger out in front of the ring to just about the middle of the first part of our broken bridge, we can change the ring's rotation start conditions by switching between the on enter and on exit conditions. Each of these makes a ring a slightly different kind of obstacle yet again. Remember to make sure the trigger isn't overlapping anything so that another object doesn't set it off. As you can see, the rotate component can be used in a myriad of ways to add spice and fun to your spaces. That does it for this tutorial, but there will be more. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post those. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.